and welcome to part two. Now we have an opportunity to hear about the topics you'll be studying from the lecturers themselves. My name is Jennifer McRae and I look after learning initiatives in um, the Irish Heritage Trust and at Photo House and this involves a range of educational initiatives such as the Culture of the Big House course run in association with UCC here and we're very excited about this course because it's um, fantastic to have it set here because we can really, really illustrate the importance of the house both in the time when it was built and what it meant but also its relevance today in the 21st century. So another aspect of my work is in interpretation and I look after a range of interpretive initiatives here one of the most recent ones has been the restoration of this night nursery and the day nursery you can see behind me. And um, this is, again, part of our mission in the Irish Heritage Trust is to make the house as interesting for everybody who comes here as possible. So if you're you know, interested in finding out what it's like to be a Victorian child, what they ate, what they studied and so on, uh, this is the ideal place. If you want to find out what it was like to be a maid in a big house, um, this again is something that we look into in our new interpretation in the service wing. We also look at the art and the architecture. So my role is very wide uh, ranging and very enjoyable I must say. The Irish Heritage Trust was set up to acquire and preserve houses like Fota, but more importantly to make them accessible to everybody for their enjoyment. So this collaboration with UCC on the Culture of the Big House course is the perfect opportunity to do that and to open the doors to a greater understanding of what the house was like. Not only that, uh, having the course set here is wonderful um, to create opportunities for experiential learning. And Photo House is actually the context, uh, it has the content and is the container for a range of historical perspectives which the UCC Culture of the Big House course will cover. My name is Dagmar Orion Redel and I'm giving the classes on the Grand Tour as it is called. This is very much different from what we hear from some of the other lectures because a lot of impetus there is on upstairs and downstairs, but in fact all I'll be talking about is upstairs, very much the aristocratic side. This was when in the 18th century the eldest sons and sometimes out the other sons were sent abroad to Germany, to France, but mainly to Italy, so to find out what culture was all about. And then they came back and then they started to build houses like this, gardens like this, as you can see from looking out this wonderful window here in Fota House. And um, it is very important to think where did the Irish get the ideas from, for their classical houses, for all the statues, the pictures they brought back. Naturally they got it when they were to Italy. And in the second part then of my lectures, I will be talking about the 19th century Romanticism, how people went to different places, to places like the Rhine, the Killarney, the Lakelands and so on, and how from there on tourism started. But for, for a lot of the time then, it was only the rich people, obviously, the aristocrats who could afford it to be sent abroad with a tutor and who spent years or months in wonderful places. Naturally, sometimes their parents were not a bit impressed when they had to keep sending money again and again to keep up their lavish lifestyles. But uh, we will look at the pictures that were painted there. We will look at the buildings in Ireland that were built like Fota House where we are today that show that the people who built it and designed it and were interested in it had been on what is called the Grand Tour. I'm Ava Welsh and I'm teaching the section on the Big House novel and what I'm enjoying about that is we have an opportunity to look at the writers of the Big House including writers like Mariah Edgeworth, George Moore, Sunville Ross and in particular we're very interested in Elizabeth Bowen and Molly Keane, the great writers of the Irish Big House novel. What's very enjoyable for us is to be able to look at the Big House novel within the context of the houses and their culture the ways in which the houses were lived in, their servants, their relationship with the surrounding landscape. So it's very much an examination of writing 
in its wider cultural context. What's very unique, I think, about this particular class and the way we can work is that we're actually sitting in the big house and we can think about the physical layout of the house and how the novels reflect this. And for the student, I think it's a very valuable chance to experience literature as social commentary and as a kind of an imaginative way into reading the world of the Irish big house. One of the main focuses uh, of our attention for the course will be the writings of Elizabeth Bowen. And Elizabeth Bowen is a very important chronicler of the big house. And of course, she is also a North Cork writer. Uh, but I'd also like students to feel that they can bring their own readings to the course. They've read other Anglo-Irish writers. And in fact, I'll introduce perhaps uh, new writings to them, give them an opportunity to extend their reading in this fascinating genre. I'm Regina Sexton from the Centre for Adult Continuing Education, University College Cork, and my contribution to the short course is to look at the culture of food in the Irish country house. Uh, that's in terms of food preparation, production, and also cooking and cookery styles. The estate records in many of the houses uh, can piece together the culture of food for us, uh, in particular things like account uh, books, uh, bills of fare, manuscript receipt or recipe books. Now, unfortunately, FOTA doesn't have still extant its estate records, but we are fortunate in having this wonderful backdrop of the kitchen complex FOTA with which to illustrate these food concerns. This is the central kitchen in the FOTA kitchen complex, and it has a spectacular roasting range, ovens, boilers, a stove. Uh, it's linked as well, for example, to the scullery just behind us, and it links through to the wet or game larger, um, an octagonal room of some rarity with a central carousel for the hanging of fur and feather game. Further along is the dry store for the storing of dried goods and across the hall is the still room for the distillation and um, preparation of things like alcohols, medicines and cordials. In more recent times it was the housekeeper's private kitchen and adjoined directly to her private dining room. Apart from the wonderful artefact that is the Fota kitchen complex, um, it does tell us much more of the story of food. Uh, it tells us, for example, of the changing fashions of food as it moves through time, uh, through the Georgian, the Victorian and the Edwardian eras. But it also tells us many more things. Um, the space, for example, I suppose is the bridge between the outside um, the, the garden and the farm, uh, bridging through to the kitchen and into the front of house. But the space also maintained, to some degree, the ambitions, the aspirations and the perceived fine tastes or refined tastes of the front of the house. But it also says many more things to us, uh, particularly in terms of the ingredients and the foods as they were prepared as they passed through here. And they speak to us of things like, I suppose, the capability of the, uh, the gardeners, the capacity of the garden, uh, the energy and the stamina of the farmers and the gamekeepers, uh, the training of the cook, and the managerial eye of the housekeeper, and not least, of course, the exchange of recipes uh, between the Irish landed elite. This is a little gem from the collection of paintings and engravings here at Photo House. It's actually a study by John Benson, who was the civic engineer for Cork in the mid-19th century, of the new railway station, Kent Station as it now is. But look at it more closely. What do you see? The details are very particular to that time in the mid-19th century. It's classical revival in style and very different to the work that was actually executed. Look more closely and you can actually see the marks in the page that show how it was creased and folded. Look closer again and see details such as one of the first early steam locomotives. And here to the right you can see the masts of ships in the harbour. A study such as Benson's engraving is a link 
between the built space of photo that was designed by architects such as William Vitruvius Morrison and also the Hill family who also designed buildings in Cork City. John Benson was responsible for the design of the Firkin Crane that we know today, which is now part of the Cork Dance Company, but was originally part of the Cork Butter Market, which in the 18th century was central to the grading of butter and the pricing of dairy produce that marked uh, a centre point in the export and import of butter and dairy produce throughout the British Empire. So there you have it. These are some of the activities and events that you will be experiencing on the course so far. For all future events at FOTA in association with University College Cork, please see the website at the end of this short film and we hope you continue to enjoy the course.